So welcome everyone to today's satsang uh, sort of workshop. Who knows what it's going to be. I don't know whether we'll be writing anything down today. We might. Um, not sure. So sometimes I come to these meetings with um, sort of given ideas. Sometimes there's two ideas given and then one will make itself a little bit clear and another one will come forward for another week. Sometimes it's good to hear how um, you hear guidance and it, it's not always, uh, it makes itself clear, it starts to bud, something starts to bud and then it comes clearer as you go into it and you sit quietly and listen. So my guidance is to make these meetings really practical get down into being very practical in terms of um, looking at the lessons. I think I'll look at some of the text a bit as well, but who knows, right? <laughs> it feels, last night I was looking at a bit of text and it, I could feel, what happens is I can feel it getting converted into teaching a group. That's what it feels like. It feels like as I read it, I get shown all the things to emphasize in a, in a teaching like this, in a group setting. But having said that, if you miss out on the teaching, you can't miss out on it, right? It, you can't. It's a, it's a curriculum that we're all going to go through at some stage. And of course, the miracles is just one of them. So it's not the only path that leads to truth. So this is sort of, it, it's like it chooses you. It speaks to you but it's not always easy. So the practical today, last week we talked about um, my salvation comes from me. And we talked about grievances and what a grievance was. And so what, what we're doing through these um, meetings is to sort of slow it right down because it's very easy to be busy in the morning and just say, I've got to do my lesson and quickly read it. And sometimes because we know we're sitting down for an hour to an hour and a half together, we can just give that time to um, really let our mind settle and really look at these things and and it might sound like I'm repeating myself, which, but I'm guided to say the same thing a few times, just so you know, this is, it's an emphasis on something. So we're going to continue in the, in what we started last week, which was um, about grievances. And so today's talk is going to be focused around a change of perception, which is a miracle, and that uh, undoes the grievance. So we're going to look very closely and we're going to be looking at it for a long, you know, for a long time in different ways. We're going to go through a couple of different things in the course just to help you because if you can sometimes if something is presented in a in a little bit of a clear way it can help you really say when you get upset i have to have a grievance and you can use a couple of the different lessons to tease it out there can be a way to sort of link up some of the um workbook lessons and the sayings from the course, and they come in to help your mind. So if you've been with the course a while, in one of the lessons, he says, you know, some of the course's teachings will come back to help you if you sit quietly. So any of these right-minded thoughts that come into your mind when you're sitting quietly, that's the Holy Spirit bringing those right-minded thoughts in. If you think I don't hear the Holy Spirit, that's his answer. Any right-minded thought is the answer from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the right-minded thought. It will bring something from the course in. Um, and 
uh, it'll also, uh, um, in that lesson last week, lesson 71, I'm not going to go through the practical application of that lesson, which was, um, you know, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? But I encourage you to do that on your own at some stage. Um, because that's really, that ties in with rules for decision. Because rules for decision are decisions and responses. And if you have a look at where would you have me go, what would you have me say and to whom, all those three lines are your decisions for the day. Because all we do in a world, ego's world as a body, all we do is make decisions and responses. That's all we do. All, all our thoughts are based on decisions. What will I do? So in every moment we're deciding what to do next. And then we're and then we're deciding on our responses to things. So if you can start, that's a really good thing. If you can grasp that you can start to really see that and become even illuminated by that little teaching that all I'm ever doing is making decisions or responses. And that's in Rules for Decision. He says, if we let go of deciding by ourselves, which is with the ego, uh, we can let the inner guide um, tell us what to do and say. And sometimes when it says what to do, I've found that in my journey, a lot of the time it will be get quiet. So it's don't think that when assessed, um, what do you want me to do? That you've got to be running around doing stuff all the time. That you'll be, oh, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm not, I'm not doing an activity. I started to see that when he says, um, See, the ego values the activity of the body. It thinks if the body's moving, it's really good. And if the body's still, it's somehow not, not good enough because the, the body's sitting still. But although the body doesn't need to be still for the mind to be still, but generally that's what happens, right? We sit still. Um, so that's one of the things that I noticed, that the ego says any you know, if hands and arms and legs move around, it's deemed better than hands and arms sitting still. You see, it's just movements of the body. It has no meaning. So um, uh, let me get back on track. <laughs> so we're going to be talking today about the emphasis today is the change of perception. So. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, reading the introduction, the first paragraph of the clarification of terms. So the emphasis here is the change of perception, which is the miracle. This is not a course in philosophical speculation, nor is it concerned with precise terminology. It is concerned only with atonement or the correction of perception. So correction of perception is the atonement. So one of the things I did is I just used the word, I just used the word correction of perception on my journey because it helped me pinpoint what the problem was. My perception needs to be changed. So I started to just use the course in a way um, and to, that was really practical. Because atonement, I knew what it meant, but for my day-to-day -day, uh, forgiveness, on our journey with forgiveness, even the word forgiveness, I just used overlooking, looking past, right? Because it just helped me. So 
use the words that make sense to you. Try to make this as practical as possible. If you start to really, um, uh, we have to know the metaphysics and we have to contemplate them because they're the basis of the course. But uh, this particular teaching today is, is about the day-to-day -day practical application of forgiveness, which is what I need to do in my day-to-day -day life every here where, as I think I'm a body in a world I my job is to have my perception changed so the first thing I need to do is to be willing to have that perception changed and the reason why I'm willing to have it changed is because I have to realize that the ego's perception um, brings misery it brings suffering so Jesus is telling us the way out of this ego perception is to have another perception so the means of the atonement is forgiveness forgiveness is the overlooking so the co so to correct my perception I have to forgive or overlook or look past, look past what I'm currently seeing and have another view of what I'm currently seeing. And that in and that change of perception and looking past and having a different perception come through of what I was currently upsetting me is the miracle. And when I get the change of perception, it always brings about a feeling of lightness. I, I get a lighter, I get a, um, that view brings an experience with it. I start to feel more peaceful, start to feel a bit happier. It may not have um, completely changed my perception, but the way it looks, the way we change our perception is like, I think I heard David Hofmeister say, it's like a submarine turning around. So inch by inch by inch, this submarine is going to turn from one way to the other way. So our perception is changed by inch by inch by inch daily, every time, we forgive or overlook something that's upsetting us and ask for another perception or have a thought that comes in that changes our perception or get silent still. It, there's, um, you know, that uh, saying in the course, you know, the miracle comes in when the mind is still. So what I did on a practical basis is when I got triggered by something and I couldn't right in that moment get quiet I would just put it aside and then I would wait till maybe when I got home that night or I had a period where I could leave that situation or that person that had triggered me and then when I got into some quiet time I would dedicate that time to saying to look at what had upset me and say, okay, this person said this or did this. And I would bring up into my awareness all the issue, the feeling of unfairly treated, the feeling that, the, that, you know, all the thoughts that the person should change. And then like the forgiveness that I did last week, my forgiveness process was letting it go. I let go. I give away all these thoughts. I give them to Holy Spirit. I don't want them anymore. So it was a real willingness that I don't want these thoughts in my mind. I don't want these beliefs. I don't like this perception that I'm currently in. And that then makes room as I cast out, and he does say, cast your fears or troubles upon me. So he's asking us to do this. So I would just say, I, I let them go. I don't want them. You can use whatever words or um, visualizations you feel that really work for you. Doesn't matter as long as we're really saying, um, this is sort of long forgiveness, I call it. 
and then quietly say, Holy Spirit, I want another perception of this. Help me see this situational person as you see them. Help me see it differently. So we're asking, um, we're asking for another perception, which is the atonement. So that's all you need to do. That's all I did for all those years of forgiveness. We, we just become, so as we start to um, ask for a change of perception, now in the um, workbook lessons, he says, apply the daily lesson to any upset. And if that doesn't work, you'll find you can, uh, he also says, ask for a word or a phrase. So sometimes I would apply the daily lesson, I didn't feel it changed. And I would say, bring me something. So it wasn't like I did the same, it was like I sort of did this asking, but it came in different ways. Sometimes I would say, help me see this differently. And I would get a feeling to go and do a Byron Katie worksheet, right? So, and then other times um, I would get this sort of feeling to ring this person up and talk about this, the, the issue. So what, what we have to understand is how that perception changes and that something comes in, you might even be directed, you might even feel like just open the course and read something or um, turn on a YouTube um, video of a teacher or, you know, listen to something or read a particular book. So what happens is the change of perception comes in in various ways. There was thousands of ways my perception which I was changed. And it's not always one thing. It could be that you're asking, I remember asking for guidance around should I leave my job or not? And I just asked, you know, like, should I? And, and then I just let go and I was driving along. I can't remember whether it was that day or a few days later. And I pulled up behind a truck and on the back of the truck was a sticker, leave your job. Now, that's a funny sticker, isn't it, right? But I thought, okay, that's the sign. <laughs> so um, uh, sometimes I'd, I'd get an answer in a movie or an advertisement or something someone said, you know, even somebody that wasn't deemed as a, on a spiritual um, path. You know, so the answer can come through anyone or anything if you remain open and desire the answer. Because what we've got to understand is the answer helps us. It changes our perception. It brings in a perception of, reminds me that I am the guiltless son of God. It reminds me who my brother is. And it asks me to keep seeing this person differently. Now, I had big issues with the people at work. I think a lot of you know my talks about, um, you know, I had family, friends, people at work. You know, Jesus says we, has a, we have a grievance with everyone, right? So sometimes it can look, the illusion can look like it's a bigger grievance with some particular bodies. And that's the way. It just seems that way. We, the ego has a hierarchy of illusions in the ego says this one's nicer, this one's awful, you know, um, and then it switches it around, right? <laughs> and that's why whatever Jesus says about the ego, we have to start to notice, oh, yes, I see. Yesterday I liked this one, didn't like this one, and today I like this one and don't like this one. Okay, so now I know I've got the proof that uh, his, his teachings are correct. So, um, you know, one thing I was guided to do with um, this particular person at work that I had trouble with, I just asked, <clears throat> I said, Holy Spirit, I really want to change my perception towards her. 
so help me. So there was many, many things he got me to do with her, but one of the things was, was just to, as I walked past her office, just to keep saying in my mind, I love you, I love you, I love you. And uh, I, was, I was terrified of her, right? Um, and so I was in my ego, but a lot of the time, it's no use saying I'm in my ego because you're stuck in the ego, you're just in the fear, right? So you're caught up, you're caught up in all the fear and the, and the, and the thoughts and you've got no perspective. You can't even say I'm in my ego because you're just caught in the, in the fear. So this is a way, this is for us to remember. And when you're caught in a lot of fear and overwhelm, it's really hard to remember to ask the Holy Spirit as well. So these are the things that start to become habits. The more we do it, it becomes more of a habit. So day to day, then every day is dedicated to forgiveness, having a miracle rather than a grievance. So accepting the atonement is having a change of perception. That's a really easy way to think about it. And the change of perception can come in all different ways. It doesn't just have to come in one way. We all have very various ways that the Holy Spirit uses to help us. If you're, if you feel, I don't, I can't hear the Holy Spirit, just, just open a page of Course in Miracles or repeat your daily lesson and apply it to it. So we've already got all the right-minded thoughts in the book, but as you continue on, you'll start to feel more and more that those right-minded thoughts are in your mind and they come forward to help change your perception so you get to the stage as you become really practiced at doing this forgiveness work um, you will start to do instant forgiveness you'll instantly see feel a trigger see it let it go and have your perception change very instantly so at the start it when I ask for a change of perception it would be a week before I got something. He, he says it's answered straight away because the answer and the problem are together. But my mind was so clouded with the ego, it was like maybe a week later there was a little break or something and the answer came in, right? All I can say is that's what happened. But the more and more I did on a daily basis, watching my mind becoming really vigilant for any upsets and I think at the start I probably had so many upsets I just caught a few and then towards the end you're catching them all because you're getting really good so this is like um, um this is a course in changing our perception and how we change our perception is we have to be aware that we're upset and then notice the upset, bring it up. So like last week, we said the hidden hatreds are going to come up. So don't feel scared if you have this really deep, if what happens, you start to realise that you have a really deep hatred towards everyone. That's what has to come up because we've been hiding it. The ego's thought system, it wants to kill everyone and wants to kill us. It's, it's, it's secret sins. It's that, that the, seek, the idea of a secret sin is that I'm sinful and I've got to hide it. So what we do is we believe in sin and we hide it. And the hidden hatred is that, oh, I feel a lot of hatred to that person, but I, I, I'm a really nice person, so I have to hide it. So this is the, all the ways that we... Um, go for many years trying to push away the secret sin that we believe is real and that we believe the hatred's real. So how what we can do is at the right time in the right way is bring these things up. We can let these things rise in our consciousness as we get still and bring up the hidden hatred and secret sins. You know, and just say, I have this belief that I'm really unworthy, that I'm somehow stained with sin. Holy Spirit, show me how this isn't true. I want to have an experience of my true nature. 
rather than this belief in sin, but I do believe in it. So we have to be honest. I mean, I had to be honest. I just said, I really believe that somehow I'm faulty, that I'm just faulty in some way. I'm broke. Some people call it broken. It's like this idea that there's just something wrong with me. But one thing I found is I could never find that. I couldn't work out what is this thing that's wrong with me, but it's the guilt. It's the hidden guilt as well. So this sin, this what we have to do is bring up these beliefs. Um, and that is, that's all part of bringing everything over a period of time. You don't have to do it right away, but it's really good to be aware that this, if you if you really want to, I mean, this is the way, right? He says, bring, bring these things to him. So um, getting back to the change of perception and the grievances, um, the structure of individual consciousness is essentially irrelevant because it is a concept presenting the original error or the original sin. To study the error, which is to study the ego, itself does not lead to correction so that's like when you go to a lot of psychologists um, and counselors they'll study the ego um, and it it doesn't lead to correction but it might be a little helpful to become at least aware of the thoughts that are, are causing you to be upset but that's that's really why I think um, this course is amazing because it really it it shows us exactly what we need to do. So uh, to study the error itself does not lead to correction if you are indeed to succeed in overlooking the error. So I'll just finish this, and it is just this process of overlooking at which the course aims. So if you want to make it really simple, like I did, I just said, look, I have to overlook. I have to constantly overlook things and I have to have a change of perception. So these things were really helpful, right? Um, because I broke it down into things that I could actually do. So I'm going to catch my upsets. I'm going to say I need to overlook it. In other words, I let go, I want to overlook, I want to get past it, I want to see something different and I can't do that myself because I'm caught in the ego, right? When we're caught up in the upset, we're, we're stuck, completely enmeshed in an ego mind. So we're calling out to something, our right-minded thoughts to come in and pierce through the darkness of the ego thought system to sort of have a little crack of light in that and uh and what has to happen in that moment is you have to have that feeling of the, i i want i don't want to hold on to this even though i'm stuck in and i'm believing it and i think i'm right and i think this person is like that and they're guilty and they're bad and they're wrong you really you, you really can feel this egoic self saying that it's right and this is this person's wrong and this is where the moment to change it you have I found this really helpful to say I want the peace of God above being right about this if I really want the peace of God I have to desire another perception of this person and situation it's the only way I'm going to have peace. So sometimes I was stuck in that story for days and weeks, but it doesn't matter how long you're stuck in it. As long as you get to a stage where you just say, right, oh my goodness, I've been in this story. All I have to do is practice forgiveness. Okay, I need a change of perception. So to me, that was a really easy way 
to put in place, excuse me, an activity of forgiveness every day. So every morning I did my lesson, I did a bit of meditation, quietening my mind. Um, I joined with God, which is what he asked us to do, did my lesson, and then I said, I'm going to practice forgiveness the best I can today. And Holy Spirit, be you in charge. And so every day, I just decided that every day for the rest of this lifetime here would be dedicated to actively trying to catch any time I was upset and ask for a change of perception. And so each time I did it, the submarine of my mind just shifted any inch by inch. So if you think I'm failing, I'm not getting anywhere, it's because you haven't, you're not quite turned right around. You just have to keep practicing forgiveness. Jesus says 70 times 70 in the Bible. So he's, and he says in the course, you know, forgiveness is my function. So we have to have a lot of patience and just dedicate every day to forgiveness. Um, so that's, that's the introduction to the clarification of terms, which tells us that the atonement means the correction of perception. And now I'm going to the start of the workbook lesson, the work, the introduction to the workbook lesson. And I'm going to read from paragraph four. The purpose of the workbook is to train your mind in a systematic way to a different perception of everyone and everything in the world. The exercises are planned to help you generalize the lessons so that you will understand that each of them is equally applicable to everyone and everything you see. So what happens is we start off very clunky, we're not good at overlooking, we get caught up more in the ego, so it's just we change a habit. So over time we practice and practice and practice forgiveness and then we get good at it. And after a long period of time, we're going to get to instant forgiveness. And then we're going to get to a place where our perception has changed from everyone and everything. We start to see that no one is doing anything to us. It's all coming from our ego mind. It's the thoughts that are giving meaning. We identify, we start to identify the cause of what I'm saying, the cause of my upset and my thoughts because I see that as I give those thoughts over and I have another perception come in, I realise that body shadows and bodies are moving around and things are moving around on the what we call the outside world. But, but in, in lesson one, it says nothing I see means anything. I have given everything all the meaning it has for me. In other words, my the ego mind is putting a meaning on it. Last week we saw, we wrote out and got an idea of the meaning that we've put on it. <clears throat> and that meaning is a grievance because the ego um, keeps us in separation. It keeps us in this right up in this way where we never, it's like when we're stuck in the ego mind, we have no awareness of God's love. And as we practice forgiveness, each, each different perception it opens up a little part of our mind, the right part of our mind, which is the Holy Spirit mind. And towards the end, the ego mind is shrunk right down and it's in, and the, the mind, 
the mind that you're living in now is really a changed perception of everything because that starts to become what you're living in every day. You are far, you find that your perception has changed so much because you've done so much forgiveness that you're now maybe waking up and looking around and someone says something and there's just no reaction. And you just, you don't see any attack because those attack thoughts um, that say I'm attacked, they shouldn't say this, they should be like that. The whole story's gone. What I noticed was the self-referencing went. It, because the ego thoughts reference a self but that was really towards the end. I couldn't see that. So there's a lot of things that are revealed towards the end as you get closer and closer to healed perception. So I'll, I think I've talked about that in some of my videos, but um, uh, if you want me to talk more about that part of my journey, um, let me know, uh, not now, but maybe uh, message me or something and I can do a talk on that. It's just started to rain here, so <laughs> whether you can hear the rain. Anyway, um, so on lesson 68, love holds no grievances. So what we can notice is last week we showed that a grievance is these ego thoughts that come forward in our mind and say that someone or something should act differently or speak differently. And so we as course students, we have to really know that that story is um, coming from our mind. It's our thoughts that are saying that. So the person or the seeming image in front of us, our brother, is really just saying something. They're just conveying or something's going on, some situation. What I found really helpful on my journey was that at times, myself and someone else might meet someone and we might be talking about maybe a world event or something and they had a completely different view to me and that really helped me see the meaning I was giving it because if I disagreed or, or had a different view it had to be a meaning I'm putting on it because in, in God's mine in God's view it's all the same right so if I said to someone I'm seeing my brother is sinless and they said yes so am I see in God's view it, there's no uh he doesn't it's changeless it's the same the only thing that can the only um the only you can Get a so, sort of these things can really help you if you're really mindful. You can use it for forgiveness and say, Well, if this is my view of this person or this situation and they've got a different view, all views have to be wrong because they're the ego and they're all wrong. So it can help you start to see that any any opinion I hold of anything, any any time I think, no, this person's really like that. And, and I can think, even if I think about someone else and say, oh, they would think of differently of that person. I know that I'm wrong. It's an ego. So it's sort of so, the, the teachings are so 100%. Um, There's no wiggle room. Anytime I think even if someone is a person, I'm wrong because they're spirit, they're the holiness of God, they're the Christ, which is not a body. 
so the perception is starting to look past it's overlooking bodies it's overlooking what bodies say what bodies do so we're starting to really try to get into a perception that they're not a body they're not their body they're not their egoic if i'm hearing the ego so something in the part of the course says uh not to demand anything of your brother that is forgiveness where it really looks at what your brother's saying or a situation in the world and it just says i'm going to correct the error at the cause which is my thoughts about it and i'm not going to come forward and demand you change i'm going to allow you to be exactly as you are and you could even for me i just thought well this is good practice it's helping you helping me practice forgiveness or it can also bring forward i'm going to see i'm going to overlook the past so love holds no grievances so when we're in a grievance we're not we're not in God's mind. So you who were created by love, like itself, can hold no grievances and know yourself. So while I hold any grievance, even one, I can't know myself, my true capitalist self a holy christ self that i am i can't know that if i hold a grievance so for me now i wouldn't want a grievance they are so occasionally the ego offers me a grievance and i'm just not interested and you know i've kept my name grieves <laughs> but uh um you know Kate grieves. No, she doesn't actually. She doesn't hold grievances, right? <laughs> um, to hold a grievance is to forget who you are. So if I am holding a grievance, I cannot remember. I'm forgetting my true self. So it's really important to remember how grievances, um, the implications of having a grievance. If you cherish these grievances, um, you'll just stay stuck in hell, right? You stay stuck in suffering. There's a lot of motivation here to practice forgiveness so you can leave the grievance aside. Because if you can know that it holding, uh, holding a grievance is an attack on God's plan for you, for your salvation, for your happiness. So, um, so really when we hold a grievance we're really saying um we're holding it's like um holding our brother's head under water and and us as well so we're really holding our brother uh as a body as a body that attacked me so it it's what the emphasis i'm sort of trying to draw through here is to really get you to contemplate how damaging it is for us to hold, hold a grievance. It's super, super damaging for us if we want happiness. We have to be really, really, um, if we really want peace and we can have peace, right, we can have that peace. That peace of God is available to all of us. But the grievance is a block. So once you know that you can have this peace of God, this tranquil mind and you understand that holding a grievance holds you away from that tranquil mind you'll want to drop it like a hot potato right you don't want it i wouldn't want a grievance if i just would not want a grievance there's no way i want to have any grievances at all because i love being in this piece of peace of god i love knowing my true self I had so many grievances. I was just so sick and so caught up and so suffering from this ego mind. 
I did all my forgiveness work and now I'm, I'm happy and peaceful. The ego occasionally says, oh, such and such, said, you see how they did? And I'm like, no, oh, not interested. Oh, instant forgiveness, not interested. I do not want to pick it up. In, in sometimes it gets halfway through the story and I'm already not interested because Jesus says we have to be vigilant. And this, this is just, it's sort of like a supersonic willingness to... I just want the peace of God. I mean, to me, I just wanted peace. I really did. I just wanted peace. I didn't want to be a teacher of A Course in Miracles. I didn't want to, I didn't want to have a, anyone liking me or following me. I just wanted to have peace. I thought, oh, wow, if peace is available, what do I have to do? Okay, I've got to have my perception changed. I have to notice my grievances. I have to be willing to notice them. And maybe sometimes I'll notice them quickly and sometimes I won't. But that's okay, as long as I notice them. Oh, I'm feeling upset and annoyed and irritated. Okay, I've got a grievance. I've got to get quiet. I've got to sit down and I have to ask for another perception or bring something into my mind to replace the grievance. I want to overlook it. So it's a practical application for this lifetime. Um, and this is a way you can really set, so, you know, keep your job, keep your family, keep everything the same, but just say it's my classroom. So I'm just going to walk around and sort of say, okay, what's, what's the mind going to be angry with today? Because it's not you, it's the thoughts that come forward and say, oh, look what they're doing. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. You know, so you go, okay. So I got to the, as I was getting towards the end of my forgiveness um, process, I just said, bring it on. Each morning, I just say, bring it on because I want to get to peace. I want to get to peace. So bring up anything that's a block. So at the start, I was a little bit hesitant. But as I got, as I realized that I, that all the grievances, once they would disappear, they they would be lighter next time. So if I saw that same person that used to trigger me, that didn't trigger me, it would be like 50%. And then the next time would be 30% triggers. And I'd be like, actually, the triggers are getting lighter, right? <laughs> and then eventually, as I did that Christ blessing towards the end of my journey, and I just sort of looked at, you know, I did that in just quietly in my mind as I met, especially my dad, I just said, you are the Holy Christ, you are innocent, you are guiltless, you are sinless. And then what I started to see, that there was no dad, really. It was just my, it was just me. It was all one. But that, those perceptions and that our understanding of oneness and that, that comes in right at the end. You can't know that you're going to go into that. You start getting all these um you start to actually the course, all the teachings of the course that have sort of been an intellectual understanding, you start living it. You start seeing, oh, I see I'm one. I'm seeing God in everything. And that's, and that's right towards the forgiven world. And then the oneness comes in and the, the holy mind and then you, you have all these realisations. But we're, we have to work with where we're at. So this is where Jesus pulls it right down into explaining about the ego, how the ego is just like a grievance-making machine, right? So as I walk around, the ego speaks first, he says. So the grievance will come in. Oh, they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't have done that. And the ego compares compares constantly, oh, look at them, they're like this and I'm like this and I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm better, I'm worse, I'm better, I'm worse, I'm better, I'm worse. <laughs> um, so you start to see how the, you start to look at the ego rather than be in it because what happens is in that change of perception, something starts to activate. It's like the right mind starts to become more embedded or budding. It's like a little flower budding in your mind and you'll start to have realisations about 
um, just about the nature of truth, about God. As you sit, I remember, you know, joining with God in the morning. I didn't feel anything for a long period of time, right? I couldn't connect to this God, but I kept practicing no matter what. I just did my practice, even though, even as I said, when I first asked, help me see this different, it took a week to come in. I just didn't give up. Just keep going. That's the main thing is just keep going. And eventually you start to notice, you, I would say, um, you know, every six months I'd look back and I'd say, actually, where was I six months ago? Where was my mind? How did my, how was my mind six months ago? And I could validate that I was activating forgiveness. I was more habitual about it and I had more peace. I had that little bit more peace and quiet and I was more aware and I was catching things and forgiving them quicker. Yes, I'd get caught up in something, but I never was hard on myself. I decided the ego would be hard on me, but I just said, no, I'm choosing to be gentle on myself, what they call a happy learner, the willing learner, the gentle. I just decided, no, I'm not listening to the ego telling me I'm failing. I'm listening to Jesus that says, good, good on you. You did, even if you do one forgiveness during a day, you've shifted that submarine around an inch, right? You're one inch closer to your per, a healed mind so it doesn't matter how long it takes it's it just takes as long as it takes and then we hear the truth that I'm already healed I'm already it's already done but that actually um for me that didn't really help me because I was caught up in the ego so that was helpful more towards the end of the journey the more, uh, more my mind sort of awakened or was awakening, undoing, I like the word undoing, things were dropping away, the grievances were dropping, there wasn't as many. So what happens is as you forgive, the ego gets a bit weaker, but then what does happen is it gets vicious right at the end. Okay, but you don't have to concern yourself with the viciousness because your um, trust in Jesus and the Holy Spirit is always higher. So the ego sort of brings out these big guns, these big grievances, these big fears, and it says, right, well, if you keep, you know, siding with God and love and uh, don't attend to all this body stuff and this world stuff, it always brings you back into death and suffering and destruction if you don't attend to body believe you're a body and do body stuff and that's when that you know you're rising above and you really have to be in that I am not a body I am free I am as God created me and really feel that and get above the battleground and be bored above it and live in that so it's sort of at that stage, it's all in. You're all in. And you'll still be able to do all the things you did before, but you'll just have no fear. You'll know who everyone is. You'll know that they're the Holy Spirit or the Christ, the love of God. You'll just see the love within them because your mind is now doing another type of projecting. It's projecting the inner love and it's finding the love. So uh, God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. So what, what we see out in the world is a projection of our mind and it's going to project the forgiven world. So let's see how the time is. To hold a grievance is to see yourself as a body. To hold a grievance is to let the ego rule your mind and condemn the body to death. Right? Because the ego holds you as a body and it knows that death, the body dies. 
in the in the dream, but you, we don't think that. So we think their bodies die. So we know, or we think that death is part of our life here. Perhaps you do not yet fully realise just what holding grievances does to your mind. It seems to split you off from your source and make you unlike him. It makes you believe that he is like what you think you have become. For no one can see that his creator is unlike himself. So the ego makes um, the ego makes a, a god like itself. That's why we always think of um, God as a body. A lot of the time, you know, as children, we think of it as an old man with a beard in the sky. So the course reframes all that and says, God is just this perfect, infinite, eternal love. It has no form. It's just like the sky. It's, it's this vast, beautiful love. It's so divine, this love. It's something that you can't even imagine being in the egoic mind. It's so beautiful and so gorgeous and so beyond anything it's just such a lovely way to be uh, to find yourself back in the mind that you never left and when you get back there you realize you never left there and you realize this whole thing that you were in was just all the a, a nothingness right but when you're in the ego it doesn't feel like that so we're journeying from the ego to this back to this mind, this oneness with this love and this peace and this tranquility and this happiness and joy. And it's all in our mind. It's nowhere else. So God, the word God has to get, you know, you can use creator or infinite love, divine love. Start to think of God as this beautiful love that is in your mind that you're going to experience. And it's available, but there's blocks. You know, we've but we've got a belief in sin and guilt and fear and body and world that all has to very, very gently be, un be undone for us to come back to this all-encompassing love. And it's all within us. It's available now. It's always available. And... Um, shut off from yourself your true self which remains aware of its likeness to its creator so this part of our mind that is itself um and it remains aware so there's a, a part of our mind is always aware of that holy self your self seems to sleep while the part of your mind that weaves illusion in its sleep appears to be awake can all this arise from holding grievances? Oh, yes. For he who holds grievances denies he was created by love. And his creator has become fearful to him in his dream of hate. Who can dream of hatred and not fear God? So this, this lesson is really pointing us that grievances and the change of perception are the way home. It's the really important application. And he's telling us here what when we hold a grievance, we're shutting off um, the awareness of our true home, our true self. So... That's why when I started to understand the importance of um, becoming aware of grievances it, and why it's so important to, uh, to want to let them go and have another perception because it's, it's holding me away from this beautiful holy love, this peace of mind. So this is what I'm trying to convey through these teachings today that grievances are the problem that's if i'm holding a grievance 
I'm really saying I want to be separate from this love. I want, because a grievance is all about a body, right? The big ego roots that everyone's bodies and they're upsetting me and I'm a body and I'm upset and it's a whole dream, but we can't see all that, but that starts to all become revealed at the end. All these teachings make sense right at the end, but where we have to start here is to at least have this idea how devastating to our mind holding a grievance is. You really don't want to hold a grievance. You really want to come to the stage where you just say, I do not want any grievances. It is sure that those who hold grievances will redefine God in their image. Um, it is sure that those who hold grievances will suffer guilt, as it is certain that those who forgive will find peace. It, it is assured that those who hold grievances will forget who they are. And it is certain that those who forgive will remember. So I'm going to remember my true beautiful self and live in a tranquil mind if I do this practice. So if you really want peace, if you really, really want to live in a tranquil mind like I did, you have to be willing to be wrong about all your grievances because when you, when you hold a grievance, part of that grievance is that I'm right because you're not realising that you're in a thought system, you're overcome by the thought system and the thought system says they're wrong and I'm right. And so that little aspect of the teaching where he says I'd be better off if I was wrong than right, in other words, it's, I'm going to be. I'm going to have peace at the end of this if I'm wrong. Would you Would you not be willing to relinquish your grievances if you believed all this was so? Perhaps you do not think that you can let your grievances go. That, however, is simply a matter of motivation. So I'm hoping through today's talk that I've motivated you to be a little bit more like, right, I want peace. If Kate's got peace and other minds that have done the course have got peace, I can have it too. So I'm going to be, become, do my best. All you need to do is do your best, right? And let go if you're caught up in them. Today, we will try to find out how you would feel without them. So we're going to now go into a meditation based on this teaching of try to get a glimpse of how you would feel without these grievances. If you succeed even by ever so little, there will never be a problem in motivation ever again. So you're going to get a glimpse of something beyond the grievances and that will motivate you to keep going. Begin today's extended practice period by searching your mind for those whom you hold what you regard as major grievances. Some of these will be quite easy to find. Then think of the seemingly minor grievances you hold against those you like or even think you love. It will quickly become apparent that there is no one against whom you do not cherish grievances of some sort. Now, we have to be really honest here. We're all holding grievance. We hold grievance. It's not, it's, he says it's our grievance, but that's because we're in the ego mind, right? This has left you alone in all the universe in your perception of yourself. Determine now to see all these people as friends. Say to them all, thinking of each one in turn as you do so, I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you a part of me. 
and come to know myself. Spend the remainder of the practice period. So I'm going to run through this and then we'll do the practice, okay? So I'll run through the instructions and then we'll take a few minutes to practice it. Spend the remainder of the practice period trying to think of yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything, safe in a world that protects you and loves you and that you love in return. Try to feel safety surrounding you, hovering over you and holding you up. Try to believe, however briefly, that nothing can harm you in any way. So I think I'll just read that again. And we might, actually, no, let's go back to the first part. Let's do the first part. So let's have a few minutes. See all these, so just close your eyes and see, you can just have people's faces come in front of your, in their mind, just see their face. Maybe your father and your mother, your siblings, brothers, sisters, your children, friends, work colleagues. And say to each of them, I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you, a part of me, and come to know myself. So I'll type that in the chat box, that little saying there, as, and I'll give you, say, five minutes to, to do this exercise.
Okay, um, now we'll do, try to remain really quiet, keep your mind anchored in on that quietness. <clears throat> Just follow these instructions, then we'll have about 10 minutes silence after this. Spend the remainder, remainder of the practice period trying to think of yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything. Safe in a world that protects you and loves you and that you love in return. Try to feel safety surrounding you, hovering over you and holding you up. Try to believe, however briefly, that nothing can harm you in any way.
Okay. So just uh, allow yourself to come back into the room, to awareness. I hope you had some beautiful experience of, I guess you could say above the battleground, above the grievances, away from the grievances, having no grievances. So in this lesson, um, Jesus says that if we have a glimpse of that, it should motivate us to let our grievances go and to see how grievances um, stop us from knowing ourselves. And that's, so even if you had the slightest experience of freedom in that meditation, just know that the more you practice this, the more you'll get to that. You'll have more and more of those experiences. And the last line of that lesson, love holds no grievances. I would wake to myself by laying all my grievances aside and wakening in him. So grievances hold us away from our awakened mind, from this holy self. They are the poison, they are the blocks. So I thank you everyone for joining today. I hope it's been very practical uh, for you and that you can maybe get a deeper understanding and we've taken this time to really look at this closely, these grievances and the change of perception. So in that meditation, if you were able to feel what it was like to feel safe and to let them all go, that's a change of perception. It's the miracle. So let's undo, let's um, unmute yourselves and we can all just bless each other with a little bit of noise. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank Bless you. you. <laughs> See you next week. Bye-bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>